Here's an example of um, linear speed and rotational speed. Um, it's a little more complicated than uh, some of the examples in the book, but uh, actually if you look in the, um, in the pre-calc book uh, at this section, they have some similar to this. But the idea here is I got a bicycle rider and the bicycle rider is going to pedal the pedals at a certain speed. By turning the pedals, you turn a gear and the gear is attached to a chain that chain pulls around another gear in the back so turning the pedals in the front will turn this gear in the back. The gear in the back is fixed to the wheel itself so that as the, the little sprocket down here turns the wheel turns at the same rotational speed. Um, and if the wheel is turning then the bicycle is going to be moving down the road. Right? So let's see what we can do here. Um, I used to used to do triathlons in my younger days um, so I did a fair amount of bike racing and um, the idea was in order to go fast you had to be able to push you had to be able to pedal in big gears and you had to be able to pedal fast best of all you could be able to pedal fast in big gears uh, that's when you really go fast um, anyway um, so let, let's say that the we're going to pedal um, yeah, too skinny yeah, there we go we're going to turn the pedals at, um, let's say, 90 revolutions per minute. That's a fairly fast, not too fast, but pedaling speed. Um, and let's give you some information about this bicycle here. So I'm going to zoom in. I'm going to get a skinnier pencil here and I'm going to zoom in on this gear. This gear here is going to have radius let's say now oh, five inches. Okay, And so as it spins it'll pull the chain and that chain is attached to the gear in the back here. Let's give this gear a radius oh, like smaller than that one, how about three inches? Okay. Then the wheel here, we need to know its radius, and the radius of the whole wheel is going to be, um, well, a standard bicycle wheel is like a 26 inch wheel, so let's say this is uh, 13 inches, so the diameter is 26 here. Okay. So if we're traveling, so if we're pedaling, at 90 revolutions per minute, the question is how fast, oops, how fast is the bicycle moving? Well, here we go. Um, 90 revolutions per minute. Let's turn that into um, radians per minute. Let's turn it into an angular speed here. Okay. So 90 revolutions per minute times for each revolution I'll exchange it for 2 pi radians worth of angle. So this would be 180 pi radians per minute. Okay, so this is how fast the front gear is spinning. So this is the angular speed of the front gear. Okay. So what does that front gear do? Well that front gear pulls a chain now the chain is is a linear thing. It's being it's wrapping around on the circumference here, and it's being pulled through. So I can figure out the linear speed of the chain by saying, what's the linear speed of a point along the edge of that gear? So I'm traveling at so I'm spinning at 180 pi radians per minute, and in this gear. I will exchange, um, so multiply by exchange rate, for every radian of turn 
that's the same as five inches of arc length moving along, right? Because the radius of that circle was five. So that's going to be 180 times five, that's five, 900 pi inches per minute. So the chain is flying through there, 900 pi, remember pi is three point something, so we're at about 2,700 inches per minute, right? Going through there. Now, every inch of chain that goes around this also goes around that. So the 900 pi inches per minute turning around this wheel is the same 900 pi minutes turning around that wheel. So, this was this was the linear speed of the chain here. Let me linear speed of the chain. So now I'm going to turn that linear speed of the chain into the angular speed of that back sprocket, right? So or the back gear. So I've got 900 pi inches per minute. That's linear speed. I want to turn it into angular speed. Well, I've got to exchange my inches for radians. Well, on that circle one radian of turn is equal to three inches, right? that's, that's three inches of arc length. The radius is the same as the arc length for one radian. So, so here we go, three inches is worth one radian of turn, so that back gear now is turning at 900 div pi divided by three, so we're at 300 pi radians per minute. So the front gear was spinning at 180 pi radians per minute. The back gear is spinning at 300 pi radians per minute. This is the angular speed of the back gear. Okay. Now the back gear is attached directly to the wheel. So the angular speed of the back gear is the same as the angular speed of the wheel. Okay, so here we go. So we're going to convert that now to the linear speed of a point on the edge of the wheel. So we've got 300 pi radians per minute. That's the angular speed of the back gear. It's also the angular speed of the wheel. So the linear speed of a point on the edge of the wheel is take that and convert it to um, linear. So every radian of turn is equal to 13 inches of arc length that goes by, right? That's the big radius is 13, so every one radian of angle is worth 13 inches of arc. So I've got 13 times 300 divided by pi, and this is going to be in inches per minute. I'm going to grab my calculator here. 300 times 13 times pi. Here we go. 300 times 13. All of a sudden I'm feeling like I should have. 300 times 13 times pi. Yeah, okay. 300 times 13 times pi is 1,200. Sorry, 12,252.2. Please, 12,252.2 inches per minute. Now, if you want to convert that to miles per hour, well, all right, now we've got something else here. So I've got that 12, uh, I rounded. I'm going to go back to just looking at, I don't want to round it if I'm going to continue a calculation. So let me, let me go back just for a moment here, and rather than multiplying the pi in, I want to just look at what is that um, 300 times 13. I seem to have missed the 3. 300 times 13 is 3,900. So this is 3,900 3, pi. Right? So I want to leave that 3,900 pi this is inches per minute, and now I'm going to convert to miles per hour because that's that's not what I wanted. Miles per hour, um, 
Well, for every foot, I've got 12 inches. The inches will cancel out. For every um, mile, mile, I've got 5,280 feet. So that converted the inches to miles. Now let's take the minutes and convert them to hours. And for every hour, I've got 60 minutes, and the minutes going to have to cancel out. So here we go. I've got 3,900 pi divided by 12 divided by 50. Yeah. All right. So those are on the top. The 12 and the 5,280 are on the bottom. So I'm going to go to my calculator. That's not my calculator. That's my email. I'm going to go to. I've got 3,900 pi. There's a times 60 on the top. There's a divided by 12, and there's a divided by 5,280. Right. Now, the calculator knows the order of operations, so it knows it'll divide the 12. The result, then it'll divide the 5,280. These both end up in the denominator when I have it written this way. And I get 11.6. So apparently, this is not a particularly big gear, because the grand total here was 11.6 miles per hour. Not particularly fast for a bicycle. Um, but anyway, the idea is you have enough information to go from how fast the pedals are turning to how fast the gear is turning, to how fast the chain is moving, to how fast the back gear is spinning, to how the wheel is spinning, to how fast the bike is moving. Now one last little bit here is that um, usually we're thinking of this center as staying in place and, the, and a point is moving along the arc. Instead what's happening is the bottom of the wheel is staying in place and, and this point is moving that way. And what happens is the tire rolls along the ground. So you've got this, this bit of arc that just gets put along the ground. So rather than having the, the object moving along the arc, the arc is moving along the ground, which causes the wheel to move. But the linear speed of a point on the arc length is, turns out to be the same as the linear speed of the center as the bike moves along here. So anyway. 90 revolutions per minute corresponded to 11.6 miles per hour.